In this video, you will learn about Robot Basics' ability to manipulate standard photographs to simulate 3D animation. You may already be familiar from some of our other videos about some of Robot Basics' animation capabilities. Let's look at an example. I've converted a picture of a house. Notice that in this situation, we're simply using the command fit bitmap and house. If I run this program, we see a house that fills the screen. If I add a line, fit bitmap tree, now in this case, we're going to place the tree at a specific location and give it a specific width and a specific height, the width being 50 and the height being 145. Notice that here is the tree placed onto the screen. Now this tree is actually this tree back here in the left corner of the house that was just captured and converted into a bitmap of its own. Now in this case, around the tree, we see a white background. That was drawn using Microsoft's Paint. If I put the command transparent on, notice that that white background disappears because whatever is in the upper left hand corner, that color becomes a transparent color for the entire picture. Now we could change that tree's height and width. Let's change the width from 50 to 150. Notice that that bush now is a totally different shape. We can tell it's distorted because the sign itself is distorted. So you have to be careful when you're adding a bitmap to another file if you want to keep the same proportions. Now let's look at how we can actually create animation in front of that house. This short program here begins with a clear screen to red, just to make it easy to see what we're going to show you. And then the transparent on again is put in. Then we've got a for loop that's going to fit bitmap P and then it's going to add the I to it. So it's going to look at, at P0 or P1, P2, P3, P4, P for photo. And then a second for loop creates P5, P6, P7, P8, and P9. Notice that all these pictures are going to be spread across the screen because we're going to change the Y position. They're all going to be 65 wide and 145 tall, and that's in both cases. Let's run this program and just see what it's doing. It creates these nine pictures. Now notice some of the pictures are too small, too slim. The reason being, as we mentioned before, that I've made all the pictures exactly the same width even though they may have been wider earlier, so it changes their proportions. So when we actually use these photos in a program, we'll have to alter them to make them the right position. Now notice that we've got different positions of walking, both walking towards you and walking to the right. All we have to do is sequence these pictures in the right order and we can make all this happen. Let's look at this short program. First of all, we're going to use RoboBasic's flip command. This allows us to write to one buffer and display a different buffer, allowing RoboBasic to create totally flicker-free animation. We're going to create the house on the screen, set the transparency to on, we're going to set up some variables that are going to keep track of where we're going to display things, because we're going to use a different scale. This S is going to be our scale. We're going to put the tree in our house, and then we're actually going to save the screen. One of the neat things about that is it saves it to a memory buffer so that instead of clearing the screen when we're doing our animation, we can bring back the original screen with all of its picture information. We're going to turn the flip on. And then as we come down through here, this for loop, let's move it up just slightly. This for loop 
is going to do all of our work for us. It's actually going to do it three times because that's how far we want this man to walk. And we're going to fit the bitmap P1, then we're going to fit the bitmap P2, and then P1 again, and then P3, and then when it goes back through the loop again, it comes back up and does P1 again. Now P1 is where both legs are together. P2 and P3 is either the left leg or the right leg is out. As we go through each of these, we're going to restore the screen that's going to give us our original house picture, and then we're going to fit the bitmap at a particular spot. Now we're using the same X in every one of these positions, but the Y is going to change because we're going to add I. I is our incremental value as we see up here. So that the man walking on the screen is going to move down the screen. That's going to make it appear like it's moving towards us. Of course, he needs to get bigger. So the width and height, which is our SX and SY, the width and height of our picture, are going to be multiplied by S. S being a scale factor. We're going to start off with it being 61% of its full size. And each time we go through the loop, we'll add 4%. So that as the man walks, you'll get bigger as he comes towards the screen. Let's see that in action. Now what we want the man to do is turn and walk up the sidewalk using our other items. Let's see how we can make the man turn. First of all, this for loop that we're seeing right here is the same program we just looked at. This makes the man walk forward. If we move down, we see another for loop that makes the man go through a sequence of four events. In each of these cases, we're using P9, as we see here, and then P5, and P6, and then back to P9 again, and then P7 and P8 as we go on down the screen. The whole idea here is that we're going to now use the sequence of pictures in which the man is walking sideways. Now in each of these cases, remember that we don't want to distort them in. So some of the pictures will have a given width let's say 65 for the width for this man, 60 for the width of this man, 85 for the width of this man. All of these have been chosen to make the pictures about the same width. We'll also need, as we move the pictures across the screen, to increment them by the certain amount. In this case, we're incrementing by a plus 8, down here by a plus 2, down here by plus 40. The whole idea is to make the man when he's repictured, be in the proper position as if he was actually walking. In addition to that, we're going to have delay loops as we go through. We're going to have this particular delay of SP divided by 5 or times 0.5. SP was set initially up here at the top at 175. So we can make the man walk faster or slower by changing that one parameter. But at different points in the program, for instance, we may be displaying delaying SP here instead of the one half of SP that we did up here. The idea there is there are certain places in which the motions that we have the man doing need to be longer or shorter. Let's watch the man as we go through here. First he walks out, then turns and walks across the sidewalk. Then he's going to do it again. Now notice as he goes by this bush in the front, he goes behind the bush so you can create very realistic animations. Now, remember, we're only using a handful of different pictures to make this movement. If we added more and more pictures, we would be able to make this as smooth as we wanted. Now, let's look and see how he walks behind this bush. The real thing here is that each time the man is drawn, we redraw the tree so that it will be in front of him if it happens to be having the man walk at the same position as the tree. Now all this is very simple, easy to do, because Robot Basic has all these special commands that make manipulating bitmaps very, very easy. Then visit robotbasic.com to download your free copy. 
the, this entire program will be available for you uh, on our Applications tab.